This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the Red Magic 3S Gaming Phone by Nubia. We reviewed the 3, and so now we're looking at the 3S, which is a minor update, but if you haven't bought one yet, it's obviously the one to consider. We have the Snapdragon 855 Plus. What do you expect here? It's an OP gaming phone, right? So that's the fastest CPU you can get. Fast UFS 3.0 storage, low power DDR4X RAM inside, 5,000 milliamp battery, nice, a big OLED display on this, and it's I've got RGB lighting strip on the back here, a little red light up logo, and a fan inside, and of course gaming accessories. And best yet, the price starts at 479 with 8 gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of storage. You can get a higher end model for 599 that raises you up to 12 gigs of RAM. I'd probably just go with the 8 gigs of RAM model. That's just fine. So that's a lot of power inside. And a rear fingerprint scanner too. We're going to look at it now. Thanks to our sponsor for this video, the game Raid Shadow Legends. It's a truly fun to play RPG game. It's available for Android and iOS and it's free to download. And it's also just been nominated for Google Play's Best of User Choice Awards for 2019. It's insanely popular with 15 million downloads in the last six months. And it's also ranked in the top three RPGs on the Google Play Store. So what is it? It's an epic dark fantasy turn-based game done right. There are 400 champions for you to collect and customize personally. And now that Christmas has come to raid, be sure to check out the Christmas-themed champions, including my fave, the Rain Beast. There's a new fusion event for Christmas with this awesome new dwarf champion, too. You can combine a few champions and get a new Christmas look for your champion, Tormund the Cold, a new legendary epic champion from the dwarf faction. Go to the video description, click on the special link, and you'll get 50,000 silver and a free epic champion as part of the new player program to start your journey. And now back to our video. So this is an unlocked phone that supports both GSM and CDMA. We're looking at the version that is sold in North America for use in the United States, and they have worldwide versions as well. What's interesting here is you have a whole lot of LTE bands. It even works on Verizon, yes, with voice over LTE. No Wi-Fi calling, though. And you even get bands like 66 for T-Mobile. So it's a pretty nice alternative. And I, you know, the interesting thing now to review this is after looking at the Asus Rogue Phone 2, even the model that's sold to the United States, they're still not supporting voice over LTE calling on that. That's the competing, even more expensive $900 gaming phone from Asus. And that's going to be a problem because carriers are going to start cutting off the base GSM and CDMA 1X for calling soon, and they're going to be using LTE for voice. So you want a phone that you know is going to work a year, two years, three years down the road, right? So worth considering. Also, this one's a lot less expensive. Granted, this is not a household name kind of brand here in Nubia in the United States. So, you know, Asus, they've been selling laptops and, well, phones, but not as popular in the United States for many years. A little more trustworthiness maybe with the warranty and all that sort of thing, but yeah. So while we were talking about things that aren't so super about the phone, there is no wireless charging here. In fact, this has an active fan. It has vents on the back. Clearly, you can't immerse this in water. There's no wireless charging. It is a metal back. There's that. And it runs Android 9 Pi. That's not a bad thing. And it's a pretty clean version of that, other than the gaming boost interface that they add for playing games. But I don't know if it's going to get Android 10, if, when, all that sort of thing. Let's hope that it does. The screen on this is very nice. It's a 90 hertz fast refresh display, which you would expect from a gaming phone. 6.65 inch OLED. So this is a big phone and a big screen phone, though. It doesn't feel really any bigger to hold than, say, a Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Plus or the OnePlus 7T Pro McLaren 5G long name phone there. It has a single 48 megapixel Sony rear sensor camera, f1.7, just one camera on this. So yeah, you don't get a telephoto lens, you don't get a wide angle lens. They have improved the software. Since we reviewed the Red Magic 3 several months ago, you can see the improvements in the software in terms of uh, photos now are pretty sharp as long as you have good light. The night mode basically just boosts contrast and colors a little bit. It's not the best thing in the world, yeah. A video has lots of color saturation, almost too much. Probably a lot of people are going to like that. And even though there's no OIS, it actually is pretty smooth. It's not jerky video. When taking photos, I'd like to see maybe a little bit more saturation, but nothing you couldn't tweak yourself, not that bad. So it's an okay camera for a sub $500 gaming phone with a huge battery and fast internals and a fan and all that sort of thing. That's where you're giving it up. It does have a headphone jack and the usual USB-C port, and it has a pogo pin connector. 
There is a fancy pants dock you can get for it. There's a 10,000 milliamp battery bank slash also kind of case for it. You get the idea. You, all these gaming phones have to have some kind of accessories, right? You, do you need them? That's up to you. While we're talking about gaming, something really interesting here, and we saw this on the Red Magic 3, is it has two capacitive shoulder buttons, which is kind of nice. If you want to keep your hands off the screen to see what you're doing, you can reassign whatever buttons you want to be the capacitive buttons. But the drawback is they are capacitive. I'd like clicky buttons because it's easy to accidentally activate them. It hasn't really ruined my gaming experience. I still like having them overall, but it's there. We also have their Game Boost software and interface, so that's kind of like your <laughs> any of the uh, gaming laptops that you see on the market. They always have a kind of portal to all of the settings and all that stuff. You can see your temperatures, you can see the fan speeds on this, you can tweak your RGB lighting on the back, you get the idea. It's cute. It works. You don't have to use it if you don't want to either. In terms of performance, yes, it is fast. It helps that it runs a pretty clean Android build and the internals are very fast on this. And yeah, you're not going to have thermal throttling as a big problem here because, well, active cooling system. It's certainly great for playing games like PUBG and other games that you can see running on screen right now. So if you really are into gaming or any really serious heavy lifting with your phone, it can handle it pretty well. 5,000 milliamp battery, that's pretty big, right? And it supports fast charging. Battery life on this on 4G LTE with Wi-Fi in use also has been quite good. It's pretty hard to not make it through a day unless you are doing something like playing PUBG for hours. One last drawback, there is no NFC here. So if you're really into Google Pay, nah, not the phone for you. This does have a factory screen protector, the usual thin plastic kind, um, no complaints about it. It's actually not that glary or icky. You can see the outline of it on the screen. If you wish to peel it off, you can. It's safe to do so. So that's the Red Magic 3S. As a sub $500 gaming phone, it's pretty darn good. No, like I said, not a household name. Don't know how fantastic the warranty support is going to be, but boy, there's a lot of specs and a lot of performance here and no thermal throttling and a really nice big OLED display. For the price, wow. And you get voice over LTE, which is something we still can't say for the United States about the ASUS Rogue Phone 2. That costs considerably more. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos and hit that notification bell.